Hey, what's going on guys? Jay here, SmartHelping.com. Uh, it's been a bit since I did a model, a couple weeks. Uh, been super busy, which is great, but uh, so today we have a depreciation recapture calculator. Now when you get to start modeling this, you're going to see it's a lot more complicated than you think. This is just a general um, single asset calculator. If you wanted to use it for multiple assets, you could always just duplicate the tabs. Um, by making a copy of them. Uh, or you could have different workbooks, save it as a different name, and you could have a bunch of different workbooks. That's fine, too. But this is the logic for a single asset, all in one tab. And what we're trying to figure out is, what are my taxes going to be, or what is the tax effect um, if I purchase, a, uh, if I make a capital asset purchase, I depreciate it at some amount every period, which we have uh, up to 600 periods here, which would be good for up to, you know, if you're doing monthly, that's uh, 50 years up to. And you just want to know what, what are your taxes. And there's this tricky thing called depreciation recapture that makes this a lot more complicated than you would think. And this calculator does all the math for you. So I'm going to show you a couple of different scenarios, why, what's going on here, how it's different. Um, in different uh, like sales proceeds and and depreciation methods. So let's go through the inputs. Uh, first of all, you're going to edit only cells in this shade. Okay. And the first input is the cost basis. So this is what your cost basis is of the asset you've bought. Usually it's the purchase price. You just put that in the cell B4. And then um, that's it. Next column, depreciation expense. So this um, could be hard coded. I, there's a bunch of different depreciation methods. You might have double declining balance, straight line. Uh, you might be doing bonus depreciation. So you can define whatever your depreciation expenses are and whatever period they are relative to the initial cost by month. You can go ahead and enter those here in column C. So this is depreciation. Now, based on that, we have a book value. So that's just reducing the asset values initial basis by the depreciation. We then have the net sales proceeds. So this is, um, and what I've done here is you can see the net taxable depreciation recapture and the remaining capital gains losses after recapture offset at any sales price. So you can adjust the sales prices and over time as the depreciation changes. So like, you know, I could just put this at 175. Let's say I sell for a $25,000 loss on the cost basis. Um, that'll produce some different scenarios here. And we'll go through it. So this is like if I sold at, you know, period one for 175, we've got um, a depreciation of $606. So the book value is 199.394. We actually have to re. So what recapture is is usually it's taxed at taxable income uh, rates up to 25%. Now that could change in the future if the laws change, but that's just generally what it is. So this amount has to be actually counted back into income and taxed. But there are some offsets. For example, in this case, we have this recapture amount for $600, but we have a capital loss of 25,000. So you're allowed to take that loss offset and apply it to the recapture. So then based on that, and I've got a lot of formulas in here to make this work right, you've got a zero taxable depreciation recapture. So we're actually not, this recapture is not being taxed because it doesn't reach the level of the capital loss. Now, as we scroll down, and we've depreciated more and more. At some point, we will have some depreciation recapture that is taxed. And so what's going on here, you can see what's the first number you start to see is depreciation recapture of 455. This is because now the taxable depreciation recapture has gone higher than the um, capital gain or loss by 455. So now you can offset the capital gain or loss by that amount. So instead of taking a $25,000 loss, you can take a $24,545 loss. 
and as you go down, let's say you sold it at some point further down for 175, 175,000. Now look, you can see this recapture is just offsetting the loss on the capital gain, and your 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 loss that you can take is starting to go down and down and down. Now, what happens when the depreciation recapture is greater than this loss? Well, it's now fully offset. So you, even though you're selling it at a $175,000 loss from the initial cost basis of 200, so $25,000 loss, you've got depreciation that's happened that's reduced it by 148, which you've taken on the income statement to reduce your taxes. Well, since you sold it for 175, that difference, which here in this case, you know, on the first one is 25,303, is higher than the capital gains loss. So now you actually have no, you don't have a capital gain, but you also don't have a capital loss, but you do have taxable depreciation recapture. And then this, if you were to sell in month uh, 83 for 175, and this is depreciation you took so far, all of this, and this is the book value. Uh, you know, you got three and three dollars that are going to be taxable. Not, you can't take this loss of twenty five thousand anymore because of the recapture effect. Now, if we keep scrolling down, what happens is you now the at any point after this, you're just going to keep taking more depreciation. So you got to recapture that if you're still selling at one seventy five, and there's no losses that happen, and it's just number keeps going up and up and up. So this illustrates to you all the different things that you have to look at when you're selling an asset uh, that you've depreciated. All right, let's do another. Let's say we sold it for two hundred ten thousand. So what happened in this case? Well, we have a ten thousand dollar gain on the basis, the cost basis. So that's going to be ten thousand no matter what. That all be taxed at capital gains. We have depreciation recapture growing. And these, this is this is a pretty simple case. The depreciation recapture just grows uh, based on whatever's been depreciated against the, uh, over time against the the initial cost, the difference of those two, and then the ten thousand above is taxed at um, the capital gains tax. The reason why these two columns are separate is they're taxed. The tr tax treatment is different, and they can offset each other. Um, so that's if it's if you sell it above the cost basis, it's pretty simple. Everything from the book value to cost basis is taxed. Um, you know, it's depreciation recapture, and then anything over two hundred thousand is taxed at that uh, capital gains or losses. Uh, let's see, what if we sold it at one ninety five? You can see this is the same same pattern as uh, when we did it at one seventy five, but it starts up higher. Um, but you've got the five thousand dollar loss. Then once the recapture gets more than 5,000, you can now offset that by the recapture. Uh, so the capital gain loss you can take goes down. And then um, at some point, you now have no capital gains or losses and you just have the, the regular tax. Uh, all right, so that's the model. I'm happy to, to take suggestions as well in the future if anyone has anything they think is relevant to add just for a nice broad use case. Um, I will be selling this for $45 if you want to download the template, and I will list it uh, links in the description box below if, it's, if you're on YouTube. Um, I will list it at smarthelping.com under the accounting trackers and calculators. I've got all kinds of tools I've built. Um, so this one will be listed in alphabetical order right under the depreciation expense tool. It'll be depreciation recapture right here. So that's the model I've done for the week. Uh, I might do another one. I don't know. Uh, it depends on what, what comes up and how the week goes. But I'm happy to get this one out, guys. And, um, oh, I didn't even adjust the screen. Sorry. Okay, so there. So smarthelping.com under the accounting trackers and calculators. Um, and these are in alphabetical order. It'll be right under the depreciation expense tool right here once I put it up on the site. And remember, you can buy all the models I've ever built for 2,500 bucks. That's over 140 templates. I do a lot of financial models, startup models, um, real estate underwriting tools, all kinds of industry specific financial models, joint venture cash flow waterfalls, just a lot of stuff I've done over the years uh, that I put into templates that's uh, very useful 
and that people have been willing to pay me to build. Uh, and discounts, again, you can buy three or more templates on the whole site and get 30% off the entire purchase. And if you do do this deal, um, I'll give you 30% off on anything you purchase in the future as well. If you want bigger discounts, you can buy the bundles that I've pre-built. You can see like the SAS bundle here, it's giving you 40% uh, real estate, over 40%. And then if you buy all the templates, it's over 50% savings. Alrighty, well, that's all I got for you, and I'll see you guys on the next one.